So it can hardly have escaped your notice that Deadpool and Wolverine is tearing up the box office right now, and from a request from my Discord, I'm going to take a review of this, as well as all the other Deadpool movies. So, let's get started. I'm sure I don't need to introduce Deadpool, I think pretty much everyone knows who he is right now, but I do have to say, and I know this is going to get me some hate, I think he's a little bit overrated. Now, to be fair, his concept of a foul-mouthed degenerate parody of old gritty 90s assassin superheroes, that's a great idea, and when he's written well, he is a brilliant character. But, since he's basically a blank check for comic writers to write and do whatever they want to, some people take advantage of that, and as a result, he can sometimes not be written brilliantly, so... I say he's a bit of a hit and miss character, and don't get me wrong, I do like him, and like I said, when he's good, he's great, but I do feel that sometimes it gives a blank check for writers to be a bit lazy, especially with his fourth wall humour, it basically means that all of his jokes are just saying references, and that can be funny, but it does get a bit tiring after a while. It's a reason why I'm more of a fan of Lobo from the DC Comics, because he does that sometimes, but most of his humour is derived from actual original humour, slapstick, and really outlandish scenarios, so I think he's actually a better character. Although that being said, I do understand why Deadpool has got a bigger fan base and has also had movies, because unlike Lobo, there is actually quite an element of sympathy and heart to his character, which we'll get into as we discuss his first movie. So since Deadpool is technically an X-Men character, that means his first two movies were made by Fox, the same company that did the other X-Men movies. Though unlike those movies, this one was not directed by Brian Singer, and thankfully not Brett Latner either. Instead, this movie was directed by Tim Miller, who would go on to be the executive producer for the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. The plot is more or less going into Deadpool's backstory. He starts off as a gun-toting mercenary with actually a pretty good relationship with his girlfriend until it turns out that he has cancer. But in a desperate attempt to try and get rid of it, he then signs up for an experimental procedure by a group of people who, let's just say, don't have the best record in terms of treating people particularly well. So, like I said, I'm sure most people know who Deadpool is, but not everyone quite knows exactly what he's about. So, to explain, basically, he was a regular person, but when he got cancer, he desperately tried to find a cure for it. So, he went to the Weapon X program, the same people who did experiments on Wolverine and a bunch of other mutants in the X-Men stories, and in a way to attempt to cure his cancer, but also as kind of a backdoor project to create a bunch of super soldiers, they injected him with the same healing factor that Wolverine has, but to a much more elevated scale. So, he does still technically have cancer, but the cells in his body regenerate faster than the cells can be degraded by the cancer. So, yeah, quite a dark and twisted backstory, but it is interesting, and it's certainly original. I can't say I've ever seen a story like this before, so I definitely give them credit on that. And more or less the first half of the movie basically details that particular part. Also, as a result of the procedure, it basically turned him into as the movie puts it, a testicle with teeth. So he looks very ugly, and I actually quite like the fact that Ryan Reynolds, who plays the part, who is amazing, by the way, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Deadpool, he was the perfect choice for the character, and I do like how he's playing him at this point in his career, because if you go back to some of his older movies, like Blade Trinity and Van Wilder, he was kind of a prick, but he's matured, and he's definitely gained an understanding of what it means to be funny, but also grounded, which was ideal for the role. But yeah, like I said, I do like how throughout most of the movie, he looks as ugly as he is, and Ryan Reynolds completely sells it. He doesn't look like he's uncomfortable in that makeup, he just owns it, and you just see Deadpool when you're looking at him. Granted, the fact that he still looks like Ryan Reynolds is a bit distracting, but as time has gone on, he's almost kind of become the character. Not in a literal sense, but you just see Deadpool when you see Ryan Reynolds, so I think that's helped in that regard. Anyway, after the procedure, they then decide to kill him because they felt he was a failure, but he manages to escape, but in the process, his girlfriend is kidnapped by Ajax, the person who did all this to him, and as such, he then decides to hunt him down in order to find her and also get his revenge because Ajax is the one who tried to kill him. So despite this being quite a big budget movie and having a lot of advertising put behind it, compared to the other X-Men movies or even the MCU movies at the time, this is actually quite a smaller scale 
scale movie. It's much more concise in terms of the amount of characters it has in it. The story is a lot more simple. It's just about one man trying to find something he's looking for. And even though the action scenes are really good, they're certainly not as spectacular as you would see in some other comic book movies. But I actually think that works to its benefit. This allows the movie to be much more of a character-focused story and also allow for really good character development and character moments, since one of the problems with the X-Men movies is because there were so many characters, it spread the focus a bit thin. Even though Wolverine did take most of the spotlight, there were still other characters that needed to be given attention to. With here, it's mostly on Deadpool, and it really works as a character study, and it also allows him to have some really good moments of his own. Like I said, I do feel that the humour gets a little bit too reference heavy and sometimes it gets a little bit too cynical. It starts to feel like something like you'd see in Family Guy. And like Family Guy, it's good in regulated doses, but if you watch it too much, it can get pretty tiring. But thankfully, since this is just a movie and not like five hours of an entire TV series, it doesn't really wear out its welcome too much. Although, if you're not a fan of this humour, I could see how it could easily get on your nerves pretty quickly. But to be fair, he's not the only character in the movie who's there to make jokes. Colossus is also one of his side characters, and he mostly plays the straight man, and he's pretty good at that. There's also TJ Miller as Weasel, and while I'm not a big fan of TJ Miller, he does a decent job as basically Deadpool's snarky mate. And there's other minor characters who get thrown in there as well, who are also very entertaining. I will also say the movie definitely has a decent amount of heart to it, which is actually interesting, because while Deadpool is not necessarily a stranger to having more sentimental elements about it, it's not really a franchise that necessarily focuses on having a sense of a heart about it. But this movie decided to have definitely a lot of sentimentality to it, and it worked pretty well actually, and it definitely made a change from other superhero movies that feel that they don't really go for this level of sentiment and romance, even if it is rather unorthodox in this movie, but it works really well. I'll also definitely praise this movie that it does not shy away from how gory Deadpool as a franchise can be. This goes hardcore, and I absolutely adore it for that. Especially considering that it's a really big budget, and like I said, it was advertised as a mainstream movie despite it being an R or an 18. But they do not shy away from it, and I think that is brilliant. Overall, I think it's definitely a good movie, but I don't think it's necessarily something I would put up there as one of my favourite superhero movies, or even one of my favourite comedies, but it definitely was a good ground starter, and it helped pave the way for movies of a similar nature, including the sequel, Deadpool 2. Deadpool 2 was directed by David Litch, who would go on to direct Bullet Train and Fall Guy. This movie has a bit of a different direction. The first movie, while it was more of an original plot for a superhero movie, in terms of overall story creation, you could kind of tell where it was going. This one takes more of an original idea, though it does borrow ideas from other X-Men stories of the past, namely Cable, who is another character created by the same person who created Deadpool, Rob Liefeld, who is basically a super soldier from the future, who comes from a post-apocalyptic timeline where Apocalypse, another X-Men villain, rules the entire world and comes back to try and stop him. They sort of use a similar attitude with this, but instead of coming back to kill Apocalypse, who was already killed in X-Men Apocalypse, he's coming back to kill a character called Fire Fist, who is basically a horribly traumatized and very abused teenager mutant who effectively projects his anger outwards, both figuratively and literally in the terms of his powers, and effectively Deadpool takes him on to try and steer him away from the path of being a villain, which Cable says he will turn out to be in the future, and is the one who is responsible for killing Cable's family, hence why he's come back to kill him. So, like I said, this is more of an original story, and admittedly this one it feels like the story takes a bit more of a backseat to the jokes, because it definitely feels like it's a story that could have been told in maybe 30 or 45 minutes, but they really pad it out, and there's a lot of excursions in there that were a little bit pointless, like the whole stuff with the X-Force. While it is funny, you could have cut it from the movie and not really lost anything, with the exception of Rob Delaney, who is definitely one of the minor highlights of the movie, and ends up becoming a much more important role in the next movie, which we'll get into. 
This is also where Deadpool's reference humor starts to get very, very unhinged. I mean, he basically references anything and everything he can think of. And again, sometimes it works, like referring to Cable as Thanos because he's played by Josh Brolin, who was also the guy who played Thanos in the MCU. That was actually kind of funny. And I'm actually surprised it took them almost two thirds of the movie to reference that, but that was still pretty good. But yeah, he really just tries to go as far in as he possibly can. And there's also the fact that because of Deadpool's breaking the fourth wall humor, there are just straight up times where he'll stop the movie and talk to the audience. Sometimes it works, but yeah, they really go overboard with it in this movie. And I do feel that the first movie was definitely the better one. This is still an entertaining movie and it's a lot of fun. But yeah, definitely, if you have to watch only one of these two, watch the first one. There are definitely some highlights, particularly a surprise villain near the end, who is also played by Ryan Reynolds, and they definitely up the gore again. But yeah, the first one definitely felt more like the significant movie. This one just sort of feels like we're not going to care as much about the story and heart, even though there is definitely a good story and some decent heart, especially near the end, particularly because Fire Fist's actor is fantastic in his role. He is really believable as this kid who is just so angry and pissed off at the world, but you know he's not a bad kid, he's just gone through some bad experiences. And they really try and make him believable, and it works, so I definitely give them credit there. But yeah, the first movie is definitely the better of the two. But, it's not the best of the franchise, as we now get into Deadpool and Wolverine. This one was directed by Sean Levy, which was an interesting choice, considering that he's got a reputation for making movies that have not done very well critically. Cheaper by the Dozen, the Pink Panther remake, and the first Night at the Museum. Though I will give him credit, in recent years he has definitely stepped up his game, mostly from getting much better writers to do his movies. And he's also done a bunch of movies with Ryan Reynolds, such as Free Guy, so he's definitely got a pedigree with working with Ryan Reynolds. And he was definitely the right choice, because this is hands down the best Deadpool movie there has ever been, as well as one of the best MCU movies. The plot to this one is definitely a lot more complicated, but that actually works to its benefit because it gives us a lot of opportunities for Deadpool to actually have some genuine, intelligent humour rather than just referencing things, and also plenty of people for him to interact with, so that works to its benefit. But basically the plot is that the Time Variance Authority, the organisation from the Loki TV series, long story, takes Deadpool out of his universe in order to save him because his universe is slowly dying due to Wolverine also dying, which happened in Logan, again, long story. But they're only taking him out, but he doesn't want his family and friends to die, so he goes around looking for another Wolverine to replace the one who died in his universe, but that brings up a bunch of more problems than he expected. For one thing, this movie definitely doesn't go with the more simple and contained cast of the previous ones. There are a lot of cameos in this movie, and this actually works because instead of Deadpool's reference humor basically just being saying things now, now he has other characters to interact with, and some of the people they brought back are genuine surprises, like Tyler Mayne as Sabretooth from the first X-Men movie, or Chris Evans as Johnny Storm from the Fantastic Four movies. Hell, they even bring back and this is spoilers, but I have to mention this, Wesley Snipes as Blade from the Blade movies. They even get Channing Tatum to play Gambit because he was scheduled to play Gambit in an unreleased film which was going to be made about the character. They really dug deep for some really obscure references to pre-MCU Marvel movies or other Marvel movies that were made besides the MCU. It is a real love letter to any of the non-MCU Marvel movies and it is a glorious tribute in that regard. It's also really good to see Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine. He is undoubtedly fantastic in the role, and this is definitely a slightly different Wolverine than we've seen, but he's definitely the character through and through. That was really cool to see. It's definitely a movie that panders to fan service, but it does it in a clever and really interesting way. And like I said, with all the different characters for Deadpool and Wolverine to interact with, it makes all the meta humor a lot more intelligent and a lot more interesting because now we're not just hearing lip service about some characters, we're actually seeing them in front of our faces and watching Deadpool having fun with them. And that works brilliantly. And that's generally what works about the comics as well, is Deadpool interacting with all of these different characters who are a lot more serious than he is and he's just basically making jokes about it and it works amazingly well in this movie. It's also got a really interesting villain. There's technically two villains who I won't go into in depth because that will be spoilers but 
they are very interesting and the second one is a very deep cut from the X-Men comics. In fact, she's a character who's not appeared in anything except the main Marvel timeline comics. This is literally her only other appearance in any form of media or timeline. So yeah, definitely a very obscure thing they dug up there, which considering what Deadpool does at the beginning of this movie, and yeah, definitely watch it just for that, I would say, but yeah, they definitely really dug deep for some Marvel lore in this, and I really appreciate them for that. Also, something I haven't mentioned is that the soundtracks to all of these movies are excellent, and they normally have one song that is pertaining to all of them, such as the first one, it was Careless Whispers, Granted, I can't remember really what the second one was, but this one has an amazing opening sequence, which again, I won't go too in depth about because that would be giving spoilers away, but it involves Deadpool killing a bunch of characters, dancing to end sync's Bye Bye Bye, which that's definitely a song I grew up with. So it was a lot of fun to see it. And also just how much they synced it up to the music was incredibly clever. There's also ACDC's Hell's Bells in there, and using ACDC in anything is an instant way to win my heart. They're my favorite band, so you use anything from them, and yeah, you're definitely going to be on my good side. This movie definitely feels like the result of being held back for so long, and they're finally given the chance to just go free range and do whatever they want to, and they do not waste that opportunity. This is definitely a movie that does everything in its power to use what it can and uses it amazingly well. I really highly recommend this movie. It was so much fun. And with that, that's all the Deadpool movies so far. I'm sure there's probably going to be more. They tease that there might be some more with this character in the future. And if they're anything like the most recent movie, I'm all for it. I kind of fell out of love with the MCU after Far From Home, and there were a few I saw in the theaters, like No Way Home, which was fantastic. And this movie definitely feels kind of like a much more darker spoof of No Way Home, but it works in that regard. Although that does bring up the point that the only non-MCU movies that they don't reference are the Sony Spider-Man movies and Ghost Rider, which the Spider-Man movies I get because they already did that for No Way Home, plus they're owned by Sony and they're very picky about who gets to use their characters. But seriously, why not Ghost Rider? And I get maybe Nick Cage wasn't available, but you could have just had some guy in the suit with the flaming skull and we wouldn't have noticed. Just seriously, reference Ghost Rider. But either way, this was a really fun movie, and I'm really hoping we see him. But either way, this was a really fun movie, and I really hope we get to see more like this in the MCU in the future. But let's see what I slash into next time.